Hi. Hi, she replied in her heavy Russian accent. It was the only English word she knew how to say, lying naked on the floor on top of her clothes, looking up at me with a blank expression as I stood there looking down at her, already sheathed under my shorts. My face fell from her, from her boyish face. My eyes fell from her boyish face onto her large breasts, and I thought about her name, Al. Was it short for something? I didn't ask. She'd just gotten here from the Soviet Union, and there she was, ready for hours. On that late summer night in 1979, one flight above the 20th floor, right next to the roof door, in the dimly lit staircase, haunted by the menacing stench of stale urine and leering ghosts of throbbing graffiti covering the gray paint chipped walls, faintly flickering like an old silent movie under the buzz of one naked light bulb hanging from the ceiling, where I lurked like a fugitive in the foreshadowing of this story. Thirteen years old in my own Coney Island, in my own Luna Park housing development where I'd been since birth, but I was the immigrant, a, a scrawny second generation Jewish American greenhorn with a secret birth defect in a strange new land of large, perfect Italian American penises. <laughs> Those belonged to Tony and Dominic, one floor below, who had each been up here with Al just a few minutes ago and were now celebrating, impatiently waiting for me to join their nation of non-virgins so we could get the hell out of there before the guards came. <laughs> Holding in the burps and much worse from all the warm Budweiser Tony Dom and I had swilled down to get our courage up, I nervously fidgeted with my hands and swayed side to side on my feet and then before dropping down to my knees and then lying on top of her. I somehow managed to open my fly and begin to pull my denim cutoff shorts and underwear down while staying prostrate, accidentally kneeing and kicking her. Ow! She complained. I realized at that moment that she knew how to say two English words. <laughs> Sorry, I replied, while continuing to jiggle my shorts lower. Smotria, sorry. Astrojno, sorry. <laughs> I finally got my shorts and underwear settled down at my ankles, only to face the stark realization that I was lying on top of a total stranger, wearing a long flapping condom on my short flaccid penis, and not quite knowing how to proceed. So I kissed her on the cheek. No response. So I kissed her on the lips. No response. So I stopped. I glanced in her eyes, and a little pre-seminal giggle dripped out of my mouth, where my terrified tongue stayed safely hidden. She smiled and gave a little giggle back. A response! Then she went back to her blank expression. How's it going up there, JK? <laughs> my giggle gasped. I'd forgotten we weren't alone. The voice of Dom, the mastermind of this mission, echoed up the stairs from below like a gunshot. Good, I sent my lie back down the stairs watching it tentatively descend step by step like the pink Spaldine we'd been using for punch ball just a few innocent hours earlier, desperately continuing the game long after the ball lost its bounce. I tried to finger her. No response. I stopped. How's it going? Uh, did you do it yet, Jake? Uh, no, not yet, but we're working on it. We're getting there. Speed it up, Jake. We can't stay here all night. All right. Closing my eyes, pretending she was Tony's sensitive, sexy older sister, Gina, wasn't working. So I <laughs> rotated my plaintive pelvis between her legs, convinced it was actually possible to penetrate her while still flaccid. All I had to do was enter, just for a second, if I could only get past the bouncer. I, I tried desperately to sh uh, smushing my soft, shrinking Play-Doh penis inside her skeptical vagina with my fingers. <laughs> I didn't dare look in her eyes. How's it going, Jake? Good. Did you do it yet? Did you do it yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Al, did he do it? I looked in her eyes, pleadingly. She looked back in mine and paused. Then she answered Dom. Yes. Her English vocabulary is growing at an alarming rate, I thought to myself. <laughs> My eyes thanked her, then quickly fell to the floor. As I stared at it, I prayed that the way I felt at that moment would camouflage me into the filthy, flat, gray surface and I would disappear. Congratulations, Jake! You're a non-virgin! Come on down, we'll, uh, we'll wait for Al on the terrace while she gets dressed. I tried to stand while pulling up my shorts from my ankles but couldn't gain my balance and almost fell down the stairs before grabbing the banister to save myself at the last second. 
finally back out on the staircase, I mean on the terrace, the, the drunken revelry of my friends was drowned out by the crashing waves of my imagination as I wondered what it was like at that moment for Al. Now getting dressed all alone, one flight up still inside the staircase, sitting there on the floor, just about dressed but only one sneaker on, still untied. She reaches into the front pocket of her jeans and pulls out a half-eaten Snickers bar still in the wrapper. She crosses her legs the way a child sits, unfolds the wrapper, and begins eating until her mouth is so full of chocolate she looks like Harpo Marx making his blowfish face. Suddenly she stops and stares at the candy bar, pretending it's a microphone as she slowly stands up. She glances down the stairs to make sure we've really left the staircase and that she's alone, turns, back to her turns her back to the imaginary audience, pauses, then shoots her arm straight up toward the light bulb in a dramatic rock star pose, her, her microphone head glowing red and erect like Lady Liberty's torch, causing a cabaret spotlight to shine down on her from above. She slowly turns around, and mascara-stained tears are falling silently down her chubby cheeks. The crowd goes wild. You hear that? Huh? I, I jump and spin around, startled. Hear what? The audience, Tony replies. I, it might be a small house, but it's a huge hand. You hear it too? Oh, I must have been imagining out loud. You're not imagining it, Jacob. You did it. It's a hit. A home run. You knocked it out of the park. They're ecstatic. They love you. They're calling for the author, director, star. Tony and Dominic pull me out onto the stage where Al is waiting. We all join hands, holding them high above our heads in triumph, and take our bow. When I straighten back up again, my hands are free and it's quiet. I look out into the audience, empty seats staring blankly back at me from the darkness. I look to my left and right and there's no one there. I'm alone. I'm all alone. Except for my shadow and the ghost light on the apron of the stage and my pen and pad in the front pocket of my pants and the sound of footsteps. The security guard is coming. I disappear. <laughs>